Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the Dark Side Detective for more point and click adventure game action. We are back where we left off. We're about to kick off case number two, which is called Tome Alone. And the first episode went pretty well, didn't it? You guys really seemed to enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a little bit on the easy side, if I'm honest. So hopefully the difficulty is going to ramp up a bit on the future cases, but I am really excited to crack on. So let's jump into case number two, Tome Alone. Case summary. Dooley suggested a visit to the library. He must have seen the strange storm gathering over it. Ooh, interesting. So a weird storm. Tome alone. Music's a bit creepy. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. That is a strange storm. It's very purple. Okay, what's the case, Dooley? Fill me in. Case! No, I've seen some overdue books to drop back. So that purple swirling vortex thing above the building has nothing to do with why we're here? Ah, uh, come on now, detective. You're hardly going to arrest the weather. The things you'll try to do to justify this department. Let's get this over with. Okay, so we're here to drop off books, apparently. We'll be done in a jiffy, detective. And there's the Popo Moto. I know you guys found that line hilarious last time, as did I. How many cases do we need to solve, do you think, to get a car that doesn't leak in the rain? Keeps us fresh, sharp even. True. Uh, what's this plaque? This is a library. What a helpful plaque. <laughs> yeah. These statues make me uncomfortable. They're not very welcoming. They should at least be reading a book or wearing glasses or something. Before this was the library, it was where the mayor kept her lying collection. Oh, right, that clears that up, so... Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Uh, we've got the books, we've got Dooley. Anything else? Nope, let's head in. Go inside. Fines for being late? How are books late? It's not that they have places to be. You're not charming your way out of this, Patrick. Rules are rules. Can't we come to some kind of arrangement? Do you have any parking tickets you want to see go bye-bye? Uh, Dooley, are you trying to bribe your way out of a fine? No. Here's an arrangement for you. I'll drop your fines if you arrest that troublesome kid. Kid? The one who's responsible for the storm. And, you know, the ghosts. Oh, ghosts. Nice. Ghosts? What? Huh. I mean, the lights went off, but I didn't see any ghosts. These brownouts seem like they're ma they make for a frustrating reading condition. <laughs> That's actually true. A silent sight. Shh! Okay. Uh, right, the books. Is this your re to read pile? Oh, I've read all those. The desk is missing a leg, so I'm using them to balance out the computer. Okay, let's talk to the librarian. Uh, what were you saying about ghosts? The place is haunted. You know, the usual stuff. The usual? Flickering lights, floating books, strange noises, eerie purple storms. It's chasing off the readers. And you say a kid is to blame? He's the only one here often enough, suspiciously often if you ask me. I'll look into it. Do, or else I'll call a pair of oddball priests and or a questionable ghost-busting startup to come fix this. Okay, what books did Dooley borrow? He had Rules to Rave to, Roswell, New Mexico, where the aliens really experiment on us, and The Law, what is it, and do we really need it? Hey, what happened to the librarian reader privilege? Not a real thing, buddy. I take it you gave up on the law book. Not enough pictures. <laughs> okay. What's that you're reading? Guylight. The heartbreaking tale of a girl who falls in love with a reverse vampire. I thought, what now? A reverse vampire? He can only come out during the day. I'm at the part where it's her prom night, and he promised to take her, but the clocks went forward, and now it's on at night. What happens if he goes out at night? He gets really sleepy. <laughs> Sounds interesting. What? It sounds awful, detective. Okay, bye-bye then. If you need anything else, I'll be here, unless I'm not. Uh, I thought you were owning I thought you found owning books suspicious. It is. What kind of secret stuff are you reading that you can't get it from your local library? Maybe people just like having their own books? Maybe it's a germ issue. Germs? You really will believe in anything Hollywood tells you. Well, Maybe a little bit. Uh, right, there's an office here, there's an elevator. Um, and that is about it. Let's check out the office first, I guess. 
computer seems to be broken. It's not broken, it's hollow, so they can store more books in it. What? <laughs> Office supplies. Never know when I need to cut something in half or a lazy approximation of half. So do we get... Scissors, nice. Okay, our first item of the case. Anything else? Nothing else here I can see myself needing. Okay, the lamp. Even the lamp is flickering. Calendar. I got this for Doris last time I had to get out of paying fees. I'm going to have to up the ante this time. Is that her? She's like stuck a photo of her head on it. <laughs> Guy light. October. Okay, fair enough. It's a bit weird. Photocopier. An old photocopier. I can't imagine this gets much use. Oh, it does. When you renew your card each year, Doris takes a photocopy of your butt for the records. <laughs> Everyone's butt? Just mine, now that I think of it. It's the price of working out, I guess. Each their own. Bin. Roses are red, violets are blue. Your loaning rights are revoked due to books overdue. <laughs> That's quite good. Is that one on the floor? No, it's fine. Right, coat rack. Looks like some of these coats have been here for years. We should go through their pockets. You know, for evidence. Okay, we've got a button. A button from an old coat. Great evidence, Dooley. Scissors. Safe for cutting, not safe for running with. <laughs> Very true. What a disappointing haul. Yeah, it wasn't the best, was it? Um, anything else in here? No, it looks like it, doesn't it? Nothing down here. No, let's talk to Dooley. I really enjoy the access to secret areas this job gets us. Staff only, not on our watch. It's true. Okay, so I guess we're going up in the elevator then. An old elevator? Where's the staircase? We have none. There was a fire, and ironically, the fire escape was the only thing that was destroyed. That's strange. Uh, right. Wow, horror. Lovely. Oh, I see the... Right, okay. It's the subjects of the... Um, books and things. Alright, plant. What odd leaves that plant has. That? That's that's just the dead tree where Doris dries her stockings. Ugh. Nasty. Um, what's this statue? Don't blink! Oh, is that like a reference to the angels from Doctor Who? Because those things are pretty scary. Right, let's go sci-fi fantasy. And the chessboard is moving itself. Swords and shield. If we lived in medieval times, we'd be living the adventures of Ye Darkseid Bailiff and his squire Dooley. <laughs> True. Fantasy books. Glum Tales of the Sad Venturer. The Library of Books. Dragon Ageism. The Witcher Tales of an Indecisive Adventurer. <laughs> Clever. What a great game, eh? Yeah, funny looking drafts pieces, though. Someone doesn't know what chess is. Ooh, a library card. How convenient. I'd have expected to go through a series of semi-logical puzzles to get this. An old library card. Library card of one smug-faced Paul Conway. Hmm. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was younger, until I found out they had to go into space. Looks like some of the rocket's al aluminium is coming off. That could be useful. Okay, we've got a metal strip as well. Thin sheets of foil. Fantastic... I think that's supposed to be Orbit. Drowned in moonlight, strangled by her own bra. <laughs> Doctor Whom's thrilling adventures through grammar and structure. <laughs> Space hike, boldly going to places safely explored by others. How to woo a Wookiee. <laughs> I've got to say, that very good book titles. So, uh, we looked at that, didn't we? Children's section. Ah, oh, is this the boy? What about this one? The world's are short and I think I can read the whole book from one cover to the other cover. Why is that floating? Oh, is that suitable for my age range? I read a book about books for my age range and they're all books about boys and wizards and talking dogs. Okay, I'll try it. I hope I like it because I've read all the books about boys and wizards and talking dogs in here. Uh, right. I hope I get to have a pet robot someday. Too many responsibilities. Feeding it, rubbing its belly, teaching it to overthrow humanity. Why would you teach it that? I want to be on their good side when the inevitable happens. Train. I've always loved trains and trams, not monorails though. Thinking they're better than everyone because they're up in the air. Right. Why your parents don't love you? Well, that's pretty deep. 
Anne and Barry face financial ruin. Little and Big Poo save the day. <laughs> Jeez. ABC as easy as 456. <laughs> vent. There's a cold draft coming from the vent. That can't be good for this kid's health. Hmm. I wonder if we can do something about that. Uh, Dooley. Nobody, not one person, needs to be talking like there is somebody invisible with them. I mean, there's a floating book. Well, that's not right. Neat trick. What magic book did you learn that from, kid? It's not magic, it's... Nothing. Looked like something to me. You look familiar. Have I arrested you before? Wasn't that bear in Alice's room in the previous case? It's a bit odd. Viewmaster. A viewmaster. I loved those as a kid. I'll take this and see if I can find a use. It's times like these that I miss walking the beat. <laughs> right, we've got a viewmaster. An old film viewing toy. Okay. Uh, that dinosaur looks suspiciously like a purple dinosaur that's quite well known. <laughs> the dust is wrong under this. Makes me think it was moved recently. Can we do anything with that? Let's call that plan B. I mean, do we want to cut it? Can we use this thing? No. So we're going to need something to move this, I'm guessing. Bad baby incites a riot. Kindergarten Kate summons the devil. Grumpy Chris hates to play. <laughs> Learn to count to 107, the largest number known to science. I reckon we might be able to put this in here, though. Come on, Frankie, you can do better than that. Right, okay, maybe not. I'd rather try something else first. Right, let's talk to little Devon. Who are you talking to, kid? I'm not telling you anything. I have heard what happens to people who do a snitch. <laughs> Modern media is really making our job hard. Right, so he won't talk to us. Can we use this on here? No. Okay. Let's leave this area then. We'll go up to the next floor. Reading room and hobby. And also we can't go in there, but maybe we can use that button for there. I don't have the skills to wire up a normal button, never mind this one. Okay. Reading room and hobby. Who's this? Professor Theodore Library, inventor of the library. Nope, not one word of that is true. Uh, reading room and hobby. Let's go reading room first. Oh, hello miss, I wasn't expecting anyone to be here. Oh, hello, my name's Raxa. I'm here to study the strange goings on. I guess that's why you're here too, detective? Oh, um, sure. That's me. Always investigating stuff on purpose. Want to share what you found? Well, it's not much, but there seems to be a strange concentration of energy in the next room. I'm searching the internet for a way to be able to see whatever it actually is. Well, let me know if you find anything. Uh, okay. What do you reckon, Dooley? You look uncomfortable, Dooley. It's this whole reading room thing. I mean, should we be reading right now? <laughs> Can I not read anywhere else? Does the room itself read? And if so, what does it read? You have a special mind, Dooley. <laughs> Chief Scully says that's why she assigned me to your department. Brilliant. Right, what are these books? I hope there's nothing contraband in this pile. I wish. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> Who doesn't need chalk in the 21st century? Most people? A fair point. Uh, so we can't take the chalk. Time always seems to stand still in boring places like libraries. Maybe. Uh, right. Can we talk to her? So, ghost hunting, eh, detective? Uh, that's classified. Because there's a whole bunch of eerie mumbo-jumbo going on here. So you notice them. I'm majoring in the occult at TLU. You can do that? I thought that stuff was banned. Somebody has to catalogue and ban it all, detective. Right. It's all fairly hush-hush. So what does one study with occultism? Whatever you want. I want the computer science, so I wouldn't be studying two impractical subjects. <laughs> Good call, Raxa. From experience, I can tell you that the occult doesn't pay much. Hmm. Okay, so there's a microfilm room. Let's head in here. Filing cabinet. Why would anyone have so many filings that they need a cabinet to store them in? Good point. Box of microfilm. Hmm, it's radiating energy, like Rex has said. I think that may be a clue, possibly. It's just too much here to take, even my pockets have their limits. It's broken. If I want to look at any microfilm, I need to find another way to do so. Let's see what we can find online. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you didn't say the magic word. <laughs> Jurassic Park reference. 
so I can need to figure out the password. So can we use this on here? The film is too big, it's a square peg, round hole situation. Let's call that plan B. Okay. We can't use this on here, no? No, okay. So, oh, unless we can cut it. Well, I've destroyed some historical material. Let's hope there's a point to this. Yeah, because now it's cut up, so we should be able to do this, right? Well, it fits. Let's look at what I didn't accidentally chop out of Twin Lakes' recent history. Spider Moths, do it again. Do it again. Sounds like they're on some kind of winning streak instead of having burnt down yet another stadium. <laughs> Major staff cuts at City Library. Hmm. Budgetary cutbacks have seen the local library reduced to a skeleton staff. I know Doris is old, but that seems a bit unfair. It means very few people work here. Oh, yep, just Doris now, and she's actually a retired volunteer. Tough times. Computer stock goes up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. Could that be the password? Up, up, down, down. I'm going to write this down. So, up, up. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. I mean, it's not particularly difficult to remember, but just in case. Shouldn't have read that aloud. I think I may have just summoned something. <laughs> Crackpot detective claims teenagers' tags were ritual meant to show the dead that walk among us. That's us. I remember this case. What the hell? Ooh. Um, hello, who are you and how did you get here? I am that which can never be unseen, the ooze from your nightmares, the knower of the unknown, Alistair Crowley. Right, that's not very helpful if I'm honest. Help is there for those that know how to take it. Okay then, I'll buy it, tell me, old knower of the unknown, what's going on here? I don't really know. Right. But I do know that the coward Yeats is protecting a hidden room, one that holds vast power and treasures. No doubt that which is responsible for the spectral summoning of myself and the others lies within. The others? The others. Detective, who are you talking to? I'm talking to... You know what, I don't even how, know how to explain this. Right, what was all that again? Yeats, secret room, mad power within. We cool, bro. <laughs> We're cool. <laughs> what? Okay, so... Is the password... Right, that's not the password then. Okay, so we've got this dude now. Let's head out. Oh, another one. Yeats. Pray, sir, a moment of your time. Another one? Another? Ah, oh, another spirit, yes. Then with your question, you have answered my own. Huh? Forgive me, but I wish to know if you have seen, on your travels, that scoundrel Crowley. Forcefully mysterious man in a silly hat. That very same. I knew he lurked here, but somewhere... He mentioned a hidden room? Yes, but on the matter, I shall say no more, not until the beast is gone. But I just want... Not a word more, sir, not a word more. Right, so something about a beast. That sounds ominous. Uh, should we go into this place? Ah, another ghost. Right. Turning duct tape into pants, make your nether sustainable. Things you can fill jam jars with, volume 3. Whittling dice out larger dice. Detective, the inspectioning investigative role-playing in the world of Darkseid. Planking with Plinkman. <laughs> One of mine, that. What's it about? Laying hardwood floors, part of a series, it were. I see they also have plonking with Plinkman. Planking with Plinkman and plunking with Plinkman. <laughs> I think I see a theme here. Brand synergy, ain't it? Why no plinking with Plinkman? Oh, that. Uh, that's in adult section, if you catch my meaning. <laughs> Oh my god. Right, yeah, okay. So, we've, we've done that. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, what are these paint mannequin? He looks like he's jumping. You jump too if somebody shoved the pole up your behind. True. Wait a minute, these are printouts of children's art. Look at Mr. Moneybags, these deep pockets, rich enough that he can pay child artists for original works, this guy. Jeez. Glue. Somebody seems to have left some glue here. It's no duct tape, but it could be useful. Okay. Pots and brushes. Why are these fake? Well, you can't have kids painting over the books. True. Right, let's talk to Gail. 
Are you an author too? I didn't recognise you. I, but not like Yon Toffs with their li literary fiction. I wrote useful stuff like house wiring and how to do plumbing. Think you could fix the elevator? With the right gear I could, I. I need a new button, mind. Right. Yeah, here's a button. What's all this for? Could you use this button to fix the elevator? I can, but won't do nothing. Needs to be conductive to make circuit work. This should make the button conductive. Okay, we've got a conductive button. Will that do? Could this button replace the broken one? Looks like it will do the job. Gives a few minutes to pop it in place. Alright. You do that. Right, so we should be able to leave now and go up to the next floor. Thanks for fixing the elevator, Gail. Happy to help. It will fun doing something useful again. It's really hard to say her accent even though I'm from England. Right, horror. Oh look, Doris must have finally fixed the elevator button. No, it was... Never mind. Ooh, spooky up here, look. Looks like you can get to the roof through here. Thankfully it's locked. I'd rather not go back out in that storm. Right, horrors that way. A collection of books that don't seem to fit anywhere else in the library. Like, how to cook a dinosaur if you ever catch one. The internet and other fads. <laughs> Architecture of the Mind by Sarah Bellum. And MMO Accountancy. Be the fictional banker you always knew you were. Hmm, okay. Well, that's one heck of a view of the city. Can't see anything. I won't tell anyone if you want to take it off. I will, but just not yet. Alright, let's go to horror. Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> you barely make teenage girls whimper, Howie. H.P. Lovecraft. Only because they cannot fathom the dread I conjure, Eddie. You play on common cliches. Your penny dreadfuls lack true horror. At best, spooky pop. Your best works aren't even written by you, charlatan, fraud, undead trickster. <laughs> you feel that way, then why did you hide my work, Eddie? Again, I say I do not have your book. You probably hid it because it was too scary for you. Gah, you're an infuriating man. Oh wow, okay, we've got a lot of books here. Lots of books, it turns out. All through the alphabet. Oh, there's a creepy bookshelf there, look at that. This is one creepy looking bookshelf. It certainly is. Um, yeah, right, Dooley. I've never been up here before. Because of the broken elevator? Because it's scary up here. Okay, let's talk to Poe. What's going on here? I didn't take his blasted book. It was that childish Blighton woman. Why don't you tell him that? He will not listen to me. He's convinced I hid it so more people would borrow my books over his. Nonsense. I care for his current... What? Okay. Didn't mean to click there. He's being such a child. I am clearly the greatest horror writer. I tore apart the minds of a generation with my atheistic horror. With your atheistic rubbish. Right, I'll have you, mate. Come at me, you sickly twerp. <laughs> you two stop it, or I'll put you both in some kind of supernatural slammer. He started it. Oh, I never, it was you and your... I don't care who started it, I'm putting a stop to it. Wait right here. I'm not a peep. Right, so I'm guessing we're going to have to find the book then to see what actually happened to it. From axes to zero oxygen, a murderer's primer. The dead person murders. Everyone's guilty. Haunted place. It kills. Lemons for every meal. Murder! The pain giver. The quirky killings. Stabfest 6. <laughs> the underwhelmer. They yearn for blood. Okay, so it does seem like the cases are longer. Maybe it was just an introductory case, case one, and that's why it's quite short and easy. Because there seems to definitely be more to it in this one. Um, but I think that's probably a good place to leave it for today. And um, we'll carry on in the next one. And yeah, I am really loving this game. I've got to say, it's very, very good. Um, I think I actually prefer this case to the previous one, actually. It's quite interesting. And there's a lot more characters and things, which is quite nice. Um, so... As always guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click on that like button. It really does help the channel to grow, so I do appreciate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you're new or just haven't already done so. And I'll see you all next time.